Hello. Today I want to talk to you about trailing stops and I'll show you how to write a function for trailing stops. If you're not familiar with them, trailing stops follow the price in the direction of your trade, maintaining some kind of distance behind, and they're intended to be a way to guard against losing in case of a price reversal. MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5 both have a trailing stop function built in that you can set trade by trade, but if you want to apply those to an expert advisor, you'll need to write some functions so that the expert automatically applies this when you create new trades. There are, of course, variations to the way you can apply trailing stops. Today, I'm just going to look at the standard or vanilla trailing stop, which is set by a certain number of points away from the price and only applies when that trailing stop is better than the original opening price. So uh, for a buy trade, only if the trailing stop is higher than the entry price or for a sell trade, only if the trailing stop is lower than the entry price. This video is for MetaTrader 4. I have a separate video for MetaTrader 5 and I'll put a link in the description and on screen here, here, for that. So now let's get into the code and see how this works. I have MetaTrader 4 open here. I'm going to go into the editor by clicking this icon. Now in the editor, I already have a folder called Orchard underneath experts. I'm going to create a folder in here for trailing stop. And then I'm going to use the wizard to create the template for my trailing stop expert. So right click and new file, expert advisor template, trailing stop, next, next, finish. So the wizard's created this file and I've closed down the navigator so that we have a little bit more space on screen. First thing I'm do, I'm just going to replace the header comment. Now, this is a trailing stop. I'll just add an explanation of how this is going to work. So these are the rules for my trailing stop. I'm only going to apply the trailing stop if it is better than the opening price. So the stop loss will never be behind the opening price. Uh, I'm also only going to apply the trailing stop if it's better than, I said here current trailing stop, but if it's better than the current stop loss. So it will only move forward as I explained the trailing stops working. So next, because this is a simple trailing stop, I just need to know how far behind the price I want to set the trailing stop. So I've got a simple input here. It's an integer, input int, and I'm just calling that input trailing, input trailing stop points. Uh, and I'm setting that by default to 500 points. Now, this is an expert advisor and it's all about showing you how to run a trailing stop. But to do that, I actually need some trades to test it against. So just for the purpose of creating some trades to test this with, I'm going to have some inputs that allow me to create the trades. So I just need the standard inputs for this, a magic number, a trade comment and a trade volume. So these are unimportant for the trailing stop. They're just going to allow me later to create a trade and you'll see the function for that. I also need a variable for the stop loss because we're doing the input in points, but to apply the stop loss, I actually need to convert that to the price value. Uh, so I'm just going to create a global variable for that. And I've just called that stop loss. Then in the init section, this is where I calculate the value of that stop loss. So I'm converting points into price and to do that, I need to get the size of a point and there is a function called symbol info double where I'm passing in the current symbol and the argument to that is symbol underscore point and that gives me the size of a single point and if I then multiply that by the number of trailing stop points I get the stop loss as a price value. So next the on dnet section Nothing to do here. I'm not creating any objects I need to dispose of. There are no timers, so I can just ignore this section. So now down to the on tick where all the work happens. And where previously I've put a lot of code in the on tick, that's not a good practice or I don't like it. So what I'm gonna do is just create a couple of functions in here or a couple of function calls uh, and then put the functions outside the on tick. So the first thing 
This is create trades. As I said, I need some trades so that I can apply a trailing stop. So the create trades function will actually create those trades. We'll see that in a moment. Uh, but for that create trades, I need the symbol, the volume, the magic number, and the trade comment. Now, these are global variables. So symbol is available everywhere, and the inputs are always global. But as good practice, when I create these functions, I prefer not to use the global variables inside the function. I prefer to pass in everything that the function needs and only use those global variables inside these event handlers, the on tick, on dnit, on init, and any other event handlers that you might have in your application. I need the globals inside these because there's no way to pass information from one, from the on init, for example, to the on tick without some kind of global variable. But within each of these, I prefer to pass all of the values the function needs, and that way the function becomes more globally useful. I can, if I wanted to create trades uh, with different volumes, for example, I can pass a different volume into them. So this is a better practice to call the functions and pass all of the global variables in and not use globals inside the functions. We have that. The other thing we need in here then is the apply trailing stops. This is a very simple expert advisor. It's just showing you how to use a trailing stop. So I have one function for creating the trades, just puts a couple of trades on so that I can apply a trailing stop. And then I'm going to apply my trailing stop to that. And the only arguments I need for that are the symbol, the magic number, and the stop loss, which I calculated here. And remember, this is a global variable here because that's the only way I can move that value into this on tick section. So symbol, magic number, and stop loss will be all I need for the apply trailing stop. So now let's get the create trades function out of the way in one hit because that's not really part of the tutorial. So create trades, here are the arguments, the symbol, the volume, magic number, and trade comment. All I'm doing is counting the number of buy and sell trades that I have because all this function is going to do is say, if there are no buy trades, it will place a buy. And if there are no sell trades, it will place a sell just to put trades on the chart. So I just declare a buy count, a sell count. I get my count of the total number of orders. Then I'm running through all of those orders, counting backwards from count minus one down to zero. The standard, if order select, position I, selecting by position and selecting the trades. And then if that selected order if the symbol matches the symbol passed in and the order number matches the magic number, then I'm simply saying if it's a buy, I'll increment the buy count. And if it's a sell, I increment the sell count. So this entire loop is just to count the number of buy and sell trades that I have. And then down here, if the buy count is zero, so I have no buy trades, I'm just going to place one with the order send. So symbol, order type buy, volume, no stop loss, no slippage, no take profit, trade comment, magic number, nothing to this and I've wrapped this as before in the if statement because I, I'll get a compiler warning if I don't capture the result from order send I don't actually need the result so I'm just going to wrap this in an if statement that suppresses the compiler warning so there's an if here the if statement closes there and then I have empty curly brackets at the end which is the content of the if I guess and um, and that will do nothing and then I've done the same here for the order send if the cell count is zero, but this time I'm placing a, an order type cell. So that gets the create trades out of the way. Now let's look at the apply trailing stop. So the apply trailing stop, passing in the symbol, magic number, and the stop loss. I need the number of digits because I'm going to be normalizing double, which you can see here. I want to know the number of digits for this particular symbol, and I can get that with the symbol info integer, passing in the symbol from here, and using the argument of symbol underscore digits. And that comes back as a long, I want to cast that to an integer, so I just bracket int, close bracket. And I'm making this static because I don't want to waste time calculating this every time I come into this function. I only need to calculate it once because it won't change. So I make a static int variable digits. This will be calculated the first time this function is called in the expert. And after that, it will just retain its value. 
then I'm trailing from the close prices. So what I need to do is take that stop loss amount and add or subtract that to the close price for buy and sell trades. And that gives me a price where I want to be setting the trailing stop. So the buy stop loss then, I've wrapped it in the normalized double function, but I'm getting symbol info double of the symbol for the symbol underscore bid argument. So this gives me the bid price and that's the closing price for a buy trade. So I've got the closing price for a buy trade. Because it's a buy, I'm subtracting the stop loss value, subtracting this, which puts the stop loss price below the buy. And then the normalized double just uses that digits that we calculated. Then the sell stop loss, the same calculation, slightly different though for the uh, close price. Here I'm getting symbol underscore ask, which is the close price for a sell trade. And I'm adding the stop loss amount to that price. So now I have the buy stop loss and the sell stop loss calculated. I need to loop through all of the trades and find the trades that have been placed by this expert. So that's the similar loop to the one in the create trades. I'm getting the number of total orders into this count variable. I'm counting down from count minus one to zero. If order select position I select by position mode trades. So this will just loop through all of the trades that I have open. Then I need to make sure that this is a trade that's been placed by this expert. So I'm testing the order symbol to make sure that matches the symbol and the order magic number to make sure it matches the magic number for this expert. So if that matches, then I know this is a trade that's been placed by this expert. After that, I need to know if it's a buy or a sell order. So I'm testing the order type, whether it's a buy. If it's a buy and the buy stop loss that I've calculated here, if that buy stop loss is greater than the order open price, so I need to make sure that the buy stop loss is better. Remember that rule that I won't place a stop loss if it would mean a loss on the trade. So it has to have passed the order open price and either the order stop loss is zero, so I haven't set a stop loss on it at all yet, or the buy stop loss is greater than the order stop loss. So it's better than that order stop loss which means that I'm only ever moving the order stop loss upwards for a buy trade. And if that's all true, then I simply issue an order modify for the order ticket, the current order open price, which I can't change, but it must be passed into this function, passing in the buy stop loss amount or the buy stop loss price and the order take profit and the order expiration. And the other side to that, if it is an order type sell, then I want to check that the sell stop loss is less than the order open price, so going downwards, and the order stop loss is either zero, meaning it hasn't been set yet, or the current sell stop loss is better than the current order stop loss, uh, or sell stop loss is less than order stop loss. And then I do the same thing, order modify the order ticket, the order open price, but this time passing in the sell stop loss, the order take profit and the order expiration. And the only other thing I'm going to do here, as I did earlier, this will issue a compiler warning because it will say I should check order modify. So I'm just going to wrap those two in if statements. So I've just said if with an open bracket and then at the end, close the if condition and empty curly brackets. So that should compile, let me just check. Yes, compiles without warning. So that is the expert advisor to apply a trailing stop. Now remember, there is no logic in here other than just create trades if they don't exist. So this is not a full expert advisor, but you can take this apply trailing stop function and use this in your expert advisors. This is all of the code for the apply trailing stop for a simple point-based trailing stop in MetaTrader 4. So that's all for this video on MetaTrader 4 trailing stops. I hope you've had some value from it. If you have, please click the like button because that helps us on the channel. And if you want to see more of our videos, then subscribe and click the bell icon and you'll be notified when we release the next video. So until then, thank you for watching.